hope you can read the board. Uh, this symbol here is an alpha, and this is an F. Please break this vector into components. Did you write down the positive directions? Please get into the habit of always writing down the positive directions. Remember, we're trying to build good habits. These are easy problems, so we're using these problems to build good habits that will serve us well on the hard problems. Well, something that will serve you very well on the hard problems is always writing down the positive directions. Then we can indicate the givens with asterisks. We can draw a right triangle that will allow us to break this into components. Notice how we try to draw a right triangle that includes the angle that we were given. There's not much point drawing the right triangle underneath the overall vector, because then that would include the angle that we were given. That would make our life a little bit trickier. And the legs are parallel or anti-parallel to the axes. This leg looks like f sub x, because it's horizontal. And this leg looks like f sub y, because it's vertical. You can label the hypotenuse, and the adjacent side, and the opposite side. Now, to find the adjacent side, we use the hypotenuse. Adjacent refers to cosine, the cut. So we need the cosine of alpha. Now, our adjacent side is the magnitude of f sub y, because we're dealing with lengths here. The hypotenuse is f. For the overall vector, I really don't care whether you use a dot or not. This is as far as we can figure out the magnitude of f sub y. And now we have to figure out the signed f sub y component. Down is the positive y direction. Oh, and looks like we left out a step, huh? We can't really figure out the sign unless we put arrows on these legs. We have to go back now and put arrows on the legs. Well. The overall vector was pointing up and to the left. The overall vector was pointing up and to the left. So the legs are pointing up and to the left. So down is positive, but the y component is up. Down is positive, but the y component is up, which is the negative direction. As usual, if you got everything right except for the signs, you totally blew it. Make sure you're getting the signs right, too. And then we have f sub x. Well, let's work that out step by step. We've done the adjacent side, so now we need the opposite side, using the hypotenuse and the sine of alpha. Sines give you opposite signs. The opposite length is the magnitude of f sub x, so we include the dot. The hypotenuse here is f sine alpha. That's as far as we can figure out the magnitude of f sub x. Uh, now we need the sine f sub x component. Now we have our arrows, so we've chosen right as the positive direction, but the x component is pointing left. Right is positive, but the x component is pointing left, which is in the negative direction. So this also comes out to be negative. So here's our answers. Answer. Answer. And uh, we really should build that into the sketch. I think I forgot to do that again in the last problem, but we should build things into the sketch. Another problem where the cosine gave you the y component, not the x component. So again, I want to remind you about this because I think it's a common mistake that students make. Usually, the cosine will give you the x component, but far from always. Sometimes the cosine gives you the y component. Usually the sine gives you the y component, but sometimes the sine gives you the x component. So don't just assume that cosine means x or sine means y. You have to work it out for every problem based on the details of that problem. Uh, by asking yourself where the adjacent side and the opposite side are. Uh, you might have noticed that in most of the previous problems, I've been using theta for the angle, and here I decided to use alpha. What was the significance of changing from theta to alpha? There was no significance to it. Uh, I'm just trying to enliven the proceedings here. Uh, so I hope that you are entertained by that change of variable from theta to alpha. Obviously, it doesn't matter what name we give to the angle, as long as we're consistent. 
Once we've decided to call this alpha, we have to use that same name throughout the whole problem. Remember that on this type of problem, uh, the convention is that the answers have to involve just the variables you were given. So our answers here have to include just f and alpha. Notice how this answer just includes f and alpha, and this answer just includes f and alpha. Um, if, if this answer here had included f sub x, it wouldn't be finished. You're not allowed to use the unknowns in your answer. You're only allowed to use the variables you were originally given. Uh, originally, the problem didn't mention f sub x and f sub y. Originally, the problem I put on the board only mentioned f and alpha. So you have to keep working until you get an answer uh, where each unknown is in terms only of the original givens. Well, that's what we accomplished. This is the type of problem you're quite likely to see as your physics course proceeds, where you're given no numbers, you're told to treat some of the variables as givens, and then you have to figure out the unknowns just in terms of the givens. Uh, if you're not finished if you're figuring out an unknown in terms of other unknowns. Let's break this vector into components. Did you start by writing down the positive direction? I hope you started by writing down the positive direction. Uh, then we need to use asterisks to indicate the givens. Let's draw our right triangle using the overall vector as the hypotenuse. The legs are parallel to the axes. We try to include the angle that we were given. Let's draw arrows on these legs. The overall vector was up and to the right. Up and to the right. What, how do we label the horizontal leg? Remember that for displacement, the symbol would be delta x for the x component, and delta y for the y component, and delta r for the overall displacement. Those are different symbols than we use for most other vectors. It's worth getting used to that. We can label our hypotenuse, and our opposite side, and our adjacent side. You don't have to keep labeling the hypotenuse opposite and adjacent if it's very easy for you to identify those in your mind now. Uh, but you should keep labeling them if the absence of labels leads to careless mistakes. The way to avoid careless mistakes if you're making them is to write more stuff down. But if you really feel that you've got this down and you're not making careless mistakes, then you can start uh, to skip some of those labels. Well, we have that uh, the adjacent side equals the hypotenuse times um, the cosine of alpha. Cosine deals with adjacent. Uh, the adjacent side here is represented by not delta x, but the magnitude of delta x. The hypotenuse is delta r. And we have cosine of alpha. That's as far as we can get, as far as the magnitude is concerned. Now it's time to figure out the sine, delta x. Well, delta x here is pointing to the right, and right is our positive direction. So delta x is positive. When you did this problem on your own, if this was the answer you got, you blew it. This is not the right answer. This is the right answer. What's the difference? The difference is that the right answer indicates the sign. If you don't indicate the sign on the sign component, you're not giving the right answer. Um, it's OK to leave the sign out here, because this is just a magnitude. But you're not done until you have the sign component. Uh, again, maybe some of you might be feeling that you're getting quite good at these problems now, and you want to start skipping steps. That's OK, as long as you're getting the problems right. For example, maybe you don't have to keep writing this step out anymore. Maybe you can just go straight to here. That's fine. So if you feel like skipping this step and just going straight to here, that's perfectly OK. As long as you get the problem right. The opposite side comes from the sign. So our opposite side here is a length, so we represent that with a magnitude, hypotenuse delta r, sine alpha. All right, so the magnitude of delta y is delta r times sine alpha. Now we have to figure out the sine of delta y. Well, delta y is pointing up, but the positive direction is down. Delta y is up, but the positive direction is down. So delta y is negative. 
That might be a little bit tricky because up is a positive sounding word. If you see that something is up, it seems a little bit weird to think that it's negative. But if you've chosen down as your positive direction, then up is negative. So make sure that you uh, handle that correctly and that you got the correct sign for this y component. As usual, it's good to build what we figured out into our sketch. Again, in this problem, I chose to use alpha as the name of the angle, but not theta. There's no real significance to that, except that if you start with alpha, you have to keep referring to alpha as you go. And again, um, if you feel like it, you can start skipping some steps. For example, maybe you don't need to write this step down anymore. Maybe you can go straight to this step. That's fine, as long as you're getting the right answer quickly and efficiently and without careless mistakes.